Hello, everybody. This is Carmelo and Sasha from Arcane Adventures back with another 10 minute investor eye test. Today, we will be looking at Mystico Network, which is set to launch this week on CoinList. It's a zero knowledge technology layer for Web3, providing a universal ZK protocol and ZK software development kit. Sasha, do you know anything about Mystico Network? Hey, dude, no, I don't know anything about Mystico Network outside of um, the description that you just went through and that we included on our three token launches coming up this week. So this is going to be kind of fun. I'm happy to see that there's more focus lately on token launches around blockchain infrastructure. Um, so taking a lot of focus away from maybe some AI copycats, but I think this is going to be exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I don't know much about it either, but I do know that you know, it's going to be leveraging ZK zero knowledge for those that don't know. And it's also going to be focused on privacy, like tr uh, financial transaction privacy, which, you know, is pretty interesting because there's this kind of weird battle in crypto. How transparent should blockchain be? How private should our financial history be? So it's interesting. Like, I, I personally believe we need these kind of privacy protocols, but I'm excited to see and learn more about Mystico Network. Absolutely. And without further ado, let's put 10 minutes up on the clock starting now. Okay. Mystico Network, an ICO, um, and it's active. Uh, let's see. It's, I guess, active until tomorrow. But some of these numbers are kind of crazy right off the bat, man. So we've got 29 million raised for Mystico Network. And again, this is um, potentially user uh, provided information mm -hmm. on crypto rank, but still a very, very high number and a very high valuation, 150 million FDV. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're claiming to be the base network of web three. So I don't know if that technically qualifies them as a, a, a blockchain, but that's not that high of a valuation for something that's blockchain or blockchain adjacent. And they do have some pretty impressive backers, you know, some angel investors from Polygon, Samsung, Morningstar, Hashkey is uh, leading the round, it looks like. And then CoinList obviously only handles pretty serious, legitimate launches for the most part. They they don't do many launches, but the ones they do are usually pretty good. I think they did Absolutely. Say and Sui or Aptos or one or, or a few of those blockchains that launched in the end of last year. Yeah, let's be honest. I think Coinless is the only tier one exchange. So let's go ahead. Or sorry, tier one launchpad. So let's go ahead and dive into the website and see what we got. All right. Oh, um, hey. hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, adjustments. Base layer of Web3, making blockchain more scalable, interoperable, and confidential. So they got their own little trilemma going on, but they're focusing on confidentiality. But the billion-dollar question is, how can you make the right people's history confidential while also, you know, stopping money laundering, uh, you know, being AML compliant, and basically stopping, like, the funding of drug cartels or terrorists or whatever you want to call it? So th this is, uh, I imagine, where the ZK comes in. Um, I think I personally understand that bit, but I don't understand what the token will do. So I guess that's always the big question on these 10-minute investor eye tests. Yeah, absolutely. If we're looking at the token as an investment vehicle, is it something that we believe is going to accrue value in the long term? But great point you made, honestly, around um, the, the confidentiality and the privacy, uh, because if there's no kind of centralized authority that's going to be governing this, then it seems like it's susceptible to censorship or um, even shutting down, just like Tornado Cash. Yep. Uh, I don't think, uh, you know, many, many regulators around the world want something that's like completely confidential and censor resistant. Mm -hmm. um, so it, one, it makes you wonder, like, how are they going to govern um, the confidentiality, <clears throat> excuse me, and the privacy? But they've got the mainnet live, uh, apparently total volume. I'm assuming that means, uh, you know, TVL, like the locked value in the chain or the network, 140 million. Um, and then they've got universal SDKs for all blockchains and apps, which is what you want to see yeah. for a new network coming to market. You want to see some infrastructure that already exists that allows people to bridge currency over um, and then builders, obviously, to build dApps, you know, with wallets and other types of smart contract um, infrastructure. So that's cool. 
Yeah, and I think it's live on Ethereum already, and it's live on several chains, but they want to integrate as many as they possibly can and create this kind of walled garden private ecosystem that interacts with, instead of creating their own, I, I think a few before have tried to create their own private, uh, not transparent blockchains. So that didn't really take off well. And like you said, you have to be compliant with the governments to be allowed to exist unless you're completely decentralized, which isn't very easy to accomplish except for you know, Bitcoin. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, um, this website, to be honest, is a little bit disappointing for me. Like, I think it's too simple. Um, there's not enough information into what this really is. Um, and, you know, there's no real context around participated programs. I don't know what BNB chain program or chain link program they're referring to. Um, but, it's a good point. you know, the use cases here might give us a little bit of insight into what the the token does maybe, but it looks like it's more so focused around the network use cases. So there's cross chain bridges, which I mean, you must have if, uh, you know, if you're building a new civilization across the river, you need to get people over there somehow. Payments, I'd be surprised if they didn't have payments. Um, Wallets slash on chain identities. Okay. Um, and then ZK technology for um, respecting privacy or pseudo anonymity, anonymity to some extent. DeFi, I think a lot of people are are very um, excited about DeFi and new networks. Private DeFi. So, <laughs> private DeFi. Check that out. ZK of ZK design features ZK rollup of transaction ZK snarks. It guarantees both scalability, less cost, and privacy. Okay, so. You know, I, I maybe we could find some technical white paper if we're interested in diving deeper, you know? Yeah, I think they have a pretty robust actual white paper, not just uh, one on Gitbook. But I still think this is very developer focused. Uh, it's talking a lot about the SDK, but obviously we want to learn as much as we can about the token. I haven't seen any information about the token yet, which is a little bit concerning. Like you said, the, the website is a little underwhelming considering the valuation and the hype behind this project. And the lack of information about the token right off the back. Uh, to be fair, they did link their white paper at the top. So maybe we're just fading them before we have a chance to look at that. Well, we got to take one step at a time. Anyways, we've got a real white paper and it looks like a technical white paper. If you see, it's mostly just a uh, text, which is kind of what you would hope to see for a more technical um, layer one or layer two or network uh, based project. <laughs> There's a lot of words, not going to le- read through a lot of this, but what we want to try and find is um, the use case around the token. Yeah, I think we were joking with some of our advisory clients this week about hitting investors over the head with a way too technical uh, white paper that no one will ever read. They'll just assume you're smart by reading, <laughs> seeing all the charts and the, the <laughs> mathematical formulas. And I think that happens a lot in the VC space. It's kind of funny. I think a lot of people, you know, I, I've got some experience reading journal articles, like science articles um, back in university um, and some early um, careers. But um, I know a lot of people are just reading these. And, you know, in, instead of like having the acumen or the experience to like criticize and find the holes, they're just like trying to hang on by a thread and understand. So it's like this is very complex stuff. Don't blame yourself if, it's, if you can't get it. And a lot of this goes over my head. And but um, no, it's, it's important to try and take a critical view. And there's no, absolutely no way you can read this in 10 minutes, let alone make an investment <laughs> decision in 10 minutes. So yeah, that's not the point of this video, at least. <laughs> oh my God, we're only halfway through and I don't see anything on the token yet. There's no, hey, you know what? Here's a, here's a tip for you, Mystico Network. Table of contents, my friends. Yeah. And just more information about the token. Like, this is great from a technical perspective. There's no... No. There's nothing about the token. There's nothing. Um, yeah, there's the references. Okay, so maybe they've got uh, something else in docs. Oh, here we go. We've got a Git book, my friend. Oh, they got both. Yeah. Um, uh, tokenomics on the bottom. Oh, okay. Here we go. XZA. ERC20. Hmm. Okay. Five blockchains so far. Um, doesn't mention the use cases yet. 
but uh, if it's a layer one or a layer zero, um, then it should be used for consensus and um, network security and governance. Operation. So miners are operators who help batch users transactions into a ZK rollup. Relayers are operators who help pay who help users pay gas in the destination chain. Okay, so it is these are primary utilities along with zk governance. So these are good things you want to see. Like it's the token needs to be there to um, as part of the consensus mechanism as part of um, the zk rollup mechanism. Yeah, and I like how they didn't just throw governance there. Like it looks like they actually thought about the the voting periods and the governance protocols. And you know, I mean, I I would still like to see more information, but this is. This is sufficient for me as an investor that I, I believe that they've actually put some thought into governance at least. And yeah, those utilities make sense. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And they got the token contract here, funny enough. But uh, I want to show you something. Look at this. Full financial privacy, um, which, I mean, that's a hard line to draw in the sand, you know. Um, that's going to draw some ire from regulators. Yeah, I mean, I, I firmly believe in financial privacy for little people or, or citizens, you know, unless you're doing something horrible, which is a tiny, minute fraction of a fraction of the population. What I want to see less privacy and transparency for is big institutions, you know. We should be allowed to see institutions like BlackRock or Vanguard and where they're pushing their money, where they're sending it, and governments as well. We, we need accountability for governments and entities, but... For little people, no. Hmm. We deserve we we deserve privacy until proven otherwise. So I think that's where the ZK comes in. You know, the fascination with ZK and, and its scalability uh, and its privacy. You know, you can log information in off off the blockchain and then just have identifiers or tags. I think that's what they're doing over at Worldcoin too. Uh, Worldcoin is a whole other topic and it's a little bit scary, but at least you can demonstrably prove. Or, or show that like ZK is helping address privacy issues. So you, you can essentially be KYC, but not have your information be known or public to anybody. It's just check mark or no check mark. Yeah, I mean, these are really good points. I want to touch on a couple of them, but before we do that, um, we want to dive into verdicts. But before verdicts, <laughs> um, make sure you guys, if you like this content, you tap that like button, throw us a subscribe if it interests you, you want to follow us and, and check out more video content coming up real soon. And uh, be sure to check out our Telegram community, a vibrant community of many, many different people, all in crypto for different reasons. Lots of fun. So, uh, Carmelo, you want to give us your verdict on this one? Yeah, I'm going to give a kind of complex verdict, but I'm going to start off by saying as a potential user of this product, I'm definitely interested. I like all the things they touched on. Um, obviously, I have some criticisms of the website and everything, but as far as the product goes and the vision, I absolutely align with that. So I'd like to explore that a little bit more if I can actually have, you know, on-chain blockchain privacy with my interactions and transactions. It might not matter now, but in the future, I think it absolutely will matter. I don't want anybody to be able to see what I'm doing with my finances. Just like if I make transactions in a, with my bank account, uh, not everybody can see that. Only me and my bank can see that. So I want something that kind of mirrors that at least. Uh, as a investor in the token, that's TBD. Like I, I would like to do some more research. I think the token utilities make sense. So I think it's at very least a safe investment. I don't think this, unless something goes catastrophically wrong, I don't think that investment would fall off a cliff, but the utilities aren't the most exciting utilities, that being said. So I would have to see. I, I know that there's this interesting conundrum with Ethereum right now. There's a poll between investors and users in the network, whereas users want cheaper transactions and investors want more expensive transactions because that's how the network gets value. So I, I imagine that that struggle is going to happen with all networks and, and blockchains. How do you find that nice line between, you know, a transaction fee that makes sense and gets bots out of there, like Binance Smart Chain or Solana has a lot of bots, but how do you also make it affordable for everyday usage? So that's something I would look at. I would like to see more about the team because we obviously didn't have enough time to look at the team. I give it a thumbs up or even two thumbs up because I like the uh, narrative behind it. But obviously you cannot make a decision in 10 minutes, so I'm not going to pretend to do that right now. Hmm. Yeah, I think I agree with everything that you said, honestly, first time. Um, so, 
Yeah, I think uh, like the product vision, the product concept is is very very good. Um, I think this is something I wouldn't I wouldn't say necessary, but it's something that's definitely going to happen. Ultimately, there's going to be more on chain privacy for people's and ins- and institutions, um, yeah. you know, financial operations, and um, it's it's a product that I would use uh, if if that's the case. I think you you touched on the token economy and the token use case pretty well. Um, pretty cut and dry, like nothing too crazy, nothing too degen, very, very simple, makes sense. Um, it's simply a network token and a governance token. And so as an investment, you're right, it is a, a safer one than a lot of things out there that people are aping into. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do want to touch on one point that struck my mind. Um, and it's not it's nothing to do really with Mystico. It's more so to do with on-chain privacy in general. I have this awful feeling that in the long term, um, on-chain privacy will be pursued by a lot of financial institutions that are stepping into crypto, um, and you see like more and more of that happening with um, the Bitcoin ETF and and then more financial capital that could come in with the Ethereum ETF. And I think a lot of these institutional players are going to be pushing mm-hmm. for um, financial privacy under the argument that it's important for them to maintain like privacy around their financial operations to prevent market manipulation and potentially even security, potentially even like national security, because a lot of these companies might be too big to fail. Um, And so I, I feel like they're going to push this agenda for like full transparency and auditing of everyday people, but privacy for themselves. And uh, that's a very bleak crypto future. Um, I really hope this is not the case, but um, you know, I hope that if there are rules or regulations being made around these things, um, they're applied evenly and equally to all. I don't think historically that's ever happened when it comes to traditional finance, but we'll see. But um, sorry to throw that depression bomb into the discussion. Oh, you're um, right. Mystico, Mystico good job. <laughs> Transparency for the big. Privacy for the small. That that's all you need to know about privacy. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think uh, Mystico looks pretty cool. I would love to dive deeper in that twenty-six page technical white paper, understand a little bit more about what they're doing and the tech aspect of it. And I'm sure there's some hint of what the token ties into there. Um, but for me, one thumb up. I'm more interested. Um, and that's ten minutes in the books from your voice, Arcane Adventures. Thanks for watching. Again, tap that like button, subscribe. We'll be around very soon. Thanks and take care, y'all. Cheers.